Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Adrian Lloyd and this is Just My Stupid Opinion. I want to thank you for tuning in. And today we need to talk about Justin Trudeau and the Canadian migrant crisis. So a few months ago it became it was reported to us that there were illegal immigrants crossing over the Canadian US border. Now these migrants were all people who had previously filed for refugee claims in the United States. Yet after Donald Trump got elected, they began fleeing the country. Donald Trump's talk of immigration has many people scared who are not native to America, so they've begun fleeing. Now, many of these have headed for Canada, but they're not doing it by going to the immigration office and filing for illegal, illegal transfer to Canada. These people are crossing at illegal tr- crossovers, and as soon as they arrive in Canada, they are filing for refugee status here. When this was first reported a few months ago, it wasn't that many people. We were told it's not a big deal not to worry about it. Well, it seems that now things have reached a new height. According to Customs and Immigration Union President Jean-Pierre Fortin, who who represents Canada's border guards, as many as 500 people are illegally crossing into Quebec every day. And the government claims that things are starting to stem, but it's still as low as 140 each day. I wouldn't say that 140 people a day minimum is this starting, is this crisis starting to die down as the government is suggesting because when this first started we were not getting that many. It was a few dozen a day that we were starting to find coming into Canada and now they're saying that on the low side it's 140 people. That's, to me, that's not good. More than 10,000 migrants have walked across the border this year, choosing deliberately to cross at unofficial crossings to avoid the safe third country agreement between Canada and the US. The safe third country agreement says that anybody who comes to either Canada or America has to file for asylum in the first country that they arrive at, and they cannot file for asylum in the other country. So you come to America first, file for asylum, you then cannot go to Canada and file for asylum. However, what is happening at these illegal crossings is people are crossing over and they are immediately getting arrested by the RCMP. The RCMP have been stationed there for months now and they warn them that they will be arrested when they cross over. However, the point is, is when they cross over, they then file for asylum and are given to them. That's not how this is supposed to work. And then they're taken in by the government and they're looked after. Far from stopping asylum claimants coming into Canada via the U.S., this agreement has simply led aspiring refugees to cross into Canada illegally and circumvent our immigration rules. And rather than cracking down on this dangerous and illegal activity, the Trudeau government has looked the other way. Worse, they've pounded a drum of their own generosity and given many the impression that Canada will welcome all refugees. When Justin Trudeau puts out tweets like this, It just signals for everybody else who has that fear in America to head to Canada. He was trying to play the compassionate card. He was trying to be, he was trying to virtue signal. And now it's backfired on all of us. Now the floodgates are open and we just have huge amounts of illegal immigrants coming into the country. And it's worse because anybody who has actually filed properly, legally, in Canada, they're getting butt to the back of the line. Now, this is something Trudeau counters as of recently, but you just see all these illegal immigrants getting taken care of. And then we, anybody you know, who is actually going through the legal system is having a bitch of a time. I have a friend of mine who's from England and he is having a bitch of a time staying in the country. He's married to a Canadian woman, but he's still having problem. Yet all of a sudden, anybody coming from south of the border who's not native to the U.S. is just welcome in like that. Canada has a lot of rigid procedures in their vetting process for immigrants. Most vetting and screening process takes about eight hours and they perform it within the first 72 hours of the immigrant arriving in the country. But the recent crisis has so many people crossing our borders, our border officers cannot control it. But according to the Committee to Aid Refugees, these new illegal migrants are taking between a month and two months just to get the vetting process started for them. Not even the whole process, but even just to get it started. 
that's unacceptable. We don't know who these people are. I mean, they could be the greatest people in the world and they're just a family coming looking for a better place. But many of them have been reported to be single adult men crossing into Canada. We don't know who these guys are. And as I stated in the Toronto Sun, before the Canadian government has determined if a person poses a national security risk to Canada, if they're a terrorist, a war criminal, a, re a fugitive, or a drug dealer, they're sent to live freely in Montreal. Before we know if they're even eligible for refugee status in Canada, if they have health problems that would make them inadmissible or if they had a previous history in Canada, we release them and hope for the best. We simply trust they bothered to show up for their initial admissibility hearing some two months later. So with this crisis, Justin Trudeau is starting to backpedal on some of the things he said. He recently met in Montreal to talk with officials about this crisis and he ended up stating that while Canada is an open society, that we are still a law-abiding country and that everybody who comes has to abide by the law. Yeah, it's taken him, what, four months after this crisis got started just to say that? And even since then, if you've taken a look at his Twitter, he's still been spouting on about immigrants come in, we're welcoming to refugees. Now, if these are legitimate refugees that need help, well, let's take a look into it. Maybe we can find something here for them. But we can't just open the floodgates. And it is illegal regardless. They're supposed to be taken care of by the U.S., now, Donald Trump is in office, it's not Barack Obama anymore, and Donald Trump is clearly harder on immigrants. That's not up to us as Canadians to decide for them. That is their government, their laws. We don't touch that, same as they don't come up here and touch our laws. Another thing Justin Trudeau has said in his recent statement is that going across the border illegally does not favor you that you should go through the proper legal process except many immigrants who are trying to file legally are getting rejected at the border but when these illegal immigrants cross instead of holding them and then sending them back to america which is what you're supposed to do we're then housing them now many of these immigrants are haitians if many of you remember, many of you probably remember back in 2010, there was the Haitian earthquake. It caused, I can't even remember exactly how many died, but it was thousands of deaths. The country was devastated. So America took on a bunch of refugees. Donald Trump recently said that over the next year, their visas may be revoked. So many of them now are trying to flee to Canada. So all these Haitians are coming here, hoping to find safe passage in Canada. And they are. But they're not supposed to technically because Justin Trudeau, about a year ago now, removed the Haitian special status. But we're still giving them the asylum that they're asking for. I don't know what the status of Haiti itself is right now. So if these people did get deported back to their native land, I don't know what their conditions would be like. I'm guessing still not good. But as far as I understand, America has been donating lots of money every year to help rebuild Haiti. So I'd be surprised if it if Haiti was not built up in some way by now. So one of the plans of Justin Trudeau to try and help stem this influx of Haitian refugees is to send a Canadian Haitian MP down to Miami where many of the Haitian immigrants live and are coming from. This MP is Emmanuel Dubourg and his point is to go to talk to the Haitian societal leaders and see if they and pretty much let them know that Canada is not an open border society. Yeah, somehow I don't think that's going to work. Just going down and saying we're not an open border society and all of a sudden they're going to be like, oh, okay. If they're getting the refuge status that they're looking for here, then why would you going down and talking to them and telling them that change their opinion about coming here? They're still going to head up here if they're worried about Donald Trump is going to deport them. And if they know Justin Trudeau won't, then there's no reason for them to stay down there and not come up here. Even if you tell them, well, you shouldn't do that. Well, you're not deporting anybody. From a logistical perspective, this influx of migrants will place further strain on Canadians already taxed refugee system. Reports from earlier this summer indicate a growing backlog of refugee claims, which are already delaying procedures beyond the time limits stipulated by Canadian regulations. Now, as new migrants are 
Now, as new migrants make demands for food, shelter, and government processing, these delays will only get worse. And this is sort of the other problem. When you have a big group of, of refugees that come in and are relying on the government to take care of them, it puts a lot of burden on taxpaying citizens. The money has to come from somewhere. It's a welfare program. We put them on welfare. The crisis has gotten so bad, they're sending people up to Montreal to live in the old Olympic Stadium that was set up there in, I think it was the 80s. They're living there. It's... That's a slum. How do you think they're living? They're probably living in tents, cots. It's a goddamn slum. And they're stating other shelters are being set up across Quebec and Ontario like this, but they're just going to house them all together and put them on the welfare system. And that's where they're gonna stay. So we have many immigrants showing up at the official legal port of La Colle in Quebec, who are probably coming in looking to pay their own way, but we're rejecting them. And then we have people who are breaking our laws, illegally, illegally crossing into our country and we're putting them on the welfare system and welcoming them, welcoming them in. This is wrong. We should be welcoming in the immigrants that are going through it the proper way and that are willing to pay their own way. Many who get on the welfare system stay on the welfare system. I understand if maybe at first some immigrants need to be on the welfare system, you start a new life if you uprooted. But very quickly, within a few months, you should be off welfare and have a job, have a place set up. I mean, that's what the government's supposed to do on the welfare system. They're supposed to help you get set up and give you the money to do so. So once you're set up, you should be getting yourself a job and be able to support yourself. I think one of the other problems, too, is that a lot of people who will come from other cultures, especially if it's like some Middle Eastern cultures, the women don't work. These days, it's very difficult to have a single income family and make ends meet. So part of the problem for them is they're probably not putting their wives to work. Their wives are still staying home with the kids, take look after the house, like in their traditional culture. But when the guy goes out to get a job, he's not making enough to actually make ends meet. So they stay on the welfare system. Francine Dupree of Prada, a provincial program for the reception and integration of asylum seekers, told the BBC that another 1,200 people cross into the province in July, about 90% of them from Haiti. Quote, usually it comes and goes and it stabilizes quite fast. In this case, what we are fearing is it might not stabilize, end quote. So with everything that's been going on, and with the Olympic Stadium housing hundreds of migrants and other facilities housing hundreds of migrants, probably not in the best conditions. People have taken a lot of notice. And so Justin Trudeau has had to backstep on a lot of what he said recently. Unfortunately for him, in this day and age, he's put it all up on Twitter so we can access it whenever the fuck we want. I mean, even if he takes it down, we have thousands of pictures of it now. But when you put out tweets such as these ones, as the leader of your country, you are just inviting people to do this, to enter illegally into our country, because you're not stopping it, you're not punishing anybody, and you're encouraging publicly for people to come to Canada. So despite the fact he's had to roll back on some of this, he's still trying to be as soft as possible. When people asked him in his recent press conference about the illegal immigrant crisis, two things, he refused to use the word crisis, and two, he refused to wor use the word illegal immigrants. He ended up calling them irregular migrants. He was clearly trying to deflect from how harsh illegal immigrants sounded to make it sound much better. Obviously, he's a master deflector. Not that he's good at it, just that he does it all the time. He even started mixing himself up while he was talking like this because he ended up saying, quote, there is no advantage to showing up irregularly, irregularly compared to uh, regularly, and, end quote. Mm. 
I see a lot of similarities between Trudeau and Obama. Obama didn't want to use certain words because he felt he was fueling the other side. But we live in reality here. We need to be honest. We need to be open. And we need to use real blunt language. This whole sugarcoating thing is a terrible idea. I've hated it. I've gotten so frustrated with places such as my work that do that, my school that'll do that. We need to be blunt with each other. If we can't be open and honest about certain situations such as immigration or terrorism, let's say, then we're actually putting ourselves in danger. We're refusing to talk about a real problem simply because we don't want to offend. This has got to end. Everyone should be offended. You don't have a right not to be offended. This is the problem with Justin Trudeau, is he cares more about feelings than facts. It's actually a classic social justice warrior, feelings over facts. I'm curious though, what do we do if our government refuses to do anything about this migrant crisis? I want you to let me know in the comments below. But I think a lot of Canadians need to start putting a lot of pressure on our government to actually act on this situation. We need to start actually sending people back across the border. We need to start enforcing these areas where the immigrants are crossing over that it's no longer acceptable for them to come across. I'm not opposed to immigration. Not at all, actually. I love, like, if you come in the legal way, and you've been vetted through the Canadian system, come on in. But you don't get to walk across our border. Unfortunately, we've kind of done it to ourselves because living on the American border, we always felt safe. And because of that, we have the longest unprotected border in all of the world because we never worried about America attacking us. We never really worried about them coming in en masse or anything like that and taking over, so. But now we actually have a reason to start beefing up our borders. Just, I think personally, we should start just putting wherever these hotspots are, we should just put the Canadian military there. We don't have enough resources from the police force to keep them there. But if we could put the, some troops there and just, they'll be the ones to pick them up, send them back to the border agents so the border agents can send them back to America, I would be okay with that. I want to thank you all for tuning in to watch me. I'm Adrian Lloyd. This is just my stupid opinion. I'll see you soon. You profit from fear and hate.